Hi, this is Scott with 4D Tech. Today we are in a 2015 Ford Mustang that came equipped with the 4.2 inch screen. We'll be performing the 4 to 8 inch conversion with sync to my Ford Touch from 4D Tech in this vehicle. To perform this upgrade, we'll need a few basic tools. 7 millimeter nut driver, plastic dash removal tools, and a small flat blade screwdriver or straight pick. Let's get started. We first need to remove this piece of trim that goes all the way across the dash as it overlaps two screws at the top of the radial bezel that we need to take out. In order to remove this section, you first need to remove this trim panel over here. We'll start with our dash removal tool and pop the clips out to pop it off. Then we can work our way across this trim panel with our dash removal tool and using our fingers to pull out. And release it across. There are a lot of clips across here, they're kind of tight, so it'll just pop off all at once for you at a certain point. With that upper panel removed, we'll set it out of the way. We will need to remove the top portion of the center console and just shift it back a little bit to gain access to these panels up here that overlap the bottom of the bezel. To do that, we first need to take these front sides off to get to the screws at the front of the console. To take the front sides off, we'll take a dash removal tool to help. You can pull out on the panel a little, start at the front edge, and work your way around, popping the clips. And then there's a mirror image of that panel on the driver's side that you remove as well. With those panels off, there's four seven millimeter screws, two on each side right at the top edge of the area that you exposed on the front of the console. We'll remove those four screws both on the driver and passenger side. With those screws out, we need to unsnap this top portion of the console and we'll start at this edge right at the back here with the compartment open, right between the tray and the upper trim, we can start to pry up. The clips will be a little tight, but once you get them released, you can work your way forward. To be able to shift this back a little bit easier, you can set the parking brake, and you can actually turn the ignition on. You can turn the ignition on without starting by pushing the start stop button once without depressing the brake. Then you can push the brake and shift the gear selector back. You can shut the ignition back off while you're doing this. The chimes will just go off for a moment telling you the transmission is not in park. So we need to pull back on this section of console to release two clips that are forward facing. Once you pull back, they'll release and it'll be out of the way. You can pull this rubber piece out of the tray and set that aside. And there's two seven millimeter screws here that need to come out. With those screws out, you can lift the tray out and set that out of the way. And there is this small cover plate right here in the middle of the bezel and you kind of got to get your fingers under it and put a pry tool behind it and it'll pop right out and out of the way and now we've exposed the two screws at the bottom that we need to get to to remove the bezel now we need to remove the four screws that hold the current front panel bezel in place
With those four screws out, we need to remove the panel. It's a very rigid panel, so if you get your fingers up at the top and pull forward, it'll come off. We'll swing the panel out and around. And there are just a few connectors that need to get disconnected. These two large connectors here, this one has a clip underneath it that you'll push in with your finger and then you can unplug it. This clip here, this has a little clip on the top. We'll push down as you see with my thumb and that unplugs as well. Then for the cigarette lighter power outlet, we'll uh, push this tab out on the outside here, squeeze that and that unplugs as well. The last thing that needs to get disconnected is this USB connector. We'll take one of our tools here and you need to pry up and down on these clips on each side of it on the top and bottom to get it to release. Once you pry up and down and get it both released, it'll pop right out. We're gonna set aside this bezel. Before we put the new one in, we will have to move the power outlet over to the new one. And we'll do that when we put the new bezel in. With the bezel out of the way, we need to remove the four inch screen and the module behind it. While we're taking these four screws out for the screen, we're gonna take the four screws out for the audio control module because we will need to pull that forward to get to a connector behind it and run other wires behind it as well. With those screws removed, we'll pull the screen forward and flip it around. And this connector has a little tab here. We'll push in with our thumb. We'll do it this way so you can see it a little bit better. Push in with our finger and then this lever toggles over to release the connector. We'll set that out of the way as we won't be reusing that screen again. This is the control module for the 4.2 inch system. So this will be coming out as well and we need to gain access to the connector plugged into it. There's three screws holding it into this plate in the back of the dash. We'll pull this module out and disconnect these USB connectors here by pushing in on the tab and unplugging them. You can see when I push in with my thumb and unplug them. Then this large main connector, we'll push in with our finger to release the lever and pull it towards us to release it, similar to how the connector came off the back of the screen. So we're gonna take this module and set it aside as we don't need it. The three screws that we're holding the module in should get set aside separately because the threads are different on them and you don't want to confuse them with the other screws during reassembly. Those three screws will not be used again during reassembly. Next, we'll need to install the four inch to eight inch conversion harness from 4D Tech that comes as part of the kit. This connector here will be plugging into the new module so we'll take this main connector here and plug it into the main connector that came out of the sink one brain. So you'll make sure the lever is towards you, push the connector in until the lever starts to move and then push the lever the rest of the way to lock it. Some of this can get tucked up behind this panel to be out of the way as we need to make room for this harness. Also, these USB cables are not going to be reused. We will be running new ones that are meant for the SYNC 3 system. So we can tuck those out of the way as well.
this adapter is included in the kit. You'll only need it if your backup camera come, came up on the four inch screen. This cable will transfer that backup camera image to the eight inch screen. So we just plug it in with the lever towards us till the lever starts to move and then lock the lever. Then we find the yellow connector on the conversion harness, take the cover off of it and plug this in. Now the rest of the cables on the conversion harness need to get routed. The one that you see the couple green wires in actually gets teed into one of the harnesses that was plugged into the front panel. The other one gets teed into the back of the ACM. This long harness here will get fished back to where the hub is located in the back of the console. We'll be running USB cables with that at the same time. So we'll pull the ACM towards us a little bit. Unfortunately, there's a few cables plugged in the ACM. Um, I wouldn't suggest unplugging them all if you don't need to. You don't need to do more work than you're required to on the system. Um, so, but unfortunately I can't show you the connector on the back of the ACM in the video as it doesn't come out far enough. There are two large connectors on the back of the ACM. You'd be able to shove your head in here and look or feel. So the middle, the one that's in the middle of the ACM or the right hand large connector is the one that gets unplugged. There's a tab right on the top of it that you push down with your thumb and unplug it. It's this connector right here. I can show you the connector. There's a tab on the top there. We will take this part of the T harness that has the orange wiring We'll grab that connector we just unplugged, plug it into one side of the T-harness, and plug the other side into the ACM. And you'll just plug that in until it clicks, just like how the other one came out. This other T harness, we want to route down below the ACM. And pull it out as it'll tee into the front control module. You want to route the cables so they will end up going to the right hand side of the ACM because when you slide the ACM back in it's got a mount that slides into a brace back there and you don't want to pinch the wiring in there. So we will take this connector for the media hub and we'll just route it down through the opening and out the side of the dash next to the console. Down here, the connectors for the front control panel. This one right here that has the 90 degree right angle plugs into this connector here on that T-harness that we fished under the ACM, and it just clicks in. This other end will end up plugging into the front control panel when we do the reassembly. So the conversion harness is installed, and the wire is dropped for the media hub. Next we need to route USB cables. 
three USB cables will come with the kit. The two cables that have all black connectors on it, one is a male to male cable and the other one is an extension. So you'll take the connector and plug the extension together with the male to male to make a long cable to run to the back. We'll tuck that up through the opening where we ran the media module power cable. That cable will run back to the media hub when we install that. The second cable will be the one that runs up to the front here and it will replace the USB cable that was in the opening here. This cable needs to run back to the media hub that we are installing so that this port is an extension of the media hub. It will take a little bit of routing to get it tucked over to the opening to drop down with the other cables. And there we go, we got the gray end of the cable pulled out the side to run to the back of the rest. And then the black end of the cable will be there to plug into the dash panel. With all the cabling routed, we want to push any cabling that goes behind the ACM to the right hand side of the ACM and carefully push the ACM back into the opening. Might take a little bit of work to get it in there right without getting caught on anything. Next, we need to install the new MyFord Touch Sync 2 screen and APIM. The screen and APIM will come pre-attached along with the brackets. So you'll just need to install it in the dash. First, we'll show you how to connect the cables. This lever on the main connector needs to be pulled all the way flat. If it is up in this position, there's a little tab that you press and swing the lever down. When you plug this in, slide the connector in and push in till the lever starts to move and then push the lever the rest of the way to lock the connector in. Then we'll take the USB cable that we ran to the that we ran down for the hub and connect that as well. And then we'll set this in the opening. Next, we'll replace the four screws that held in the previous screen to hold in this screen, and we'll replace the four screws at the audio control module as well.
With the new system installed and the screws back in the audio control module, next we'll be putting our new control panel bezel on that has the eight inch opening. But first, we need to get the power outlet out of the old bezel to transfer to the new bezel. To do this, we'll take a small, you can take a really small flat blade or a straight pick tool or so, and inside of this power outlet is a black tab on each side across from each other. And you'll push in on that black tab while you push through the power outlet from the back side. As you can see, once I push the tabs, the power outlet pushes out from the back side. And then we need this door as well. And now we can set this aside. Now we'll take our new eight inch bezel from 4D Tech as part of the kit. We'll have to snap the cover in. Remember that the door swung towards the passenger side. And then this power outlet is keyed, so it'll only go in one way. And we just have to swing it around. There we go. And push the power outlet in until it locks. Now we'll put the new bezel on the dash. The USB cable that we ran with the gray connector dropped down to go back to the hub. We'll want to plug this one into the back of the dash here. Do not plug back in the one that you disconnected earlier as that one is no longer used. This connector plugs back in a little bit differently than the one that came out. Instead of a clip, it has the lever lock like we saw on the back of the screen. You'll want to make sure the lever is all the way towards you push it into the back of the bezel till the lever starts to move and push the lever the rest of the way to lock it. Then this connector with the clip facing up reconnects as well. Lastly, make sure you reconnect the power outlet. The clip on the side of it is gonna to face towards the passenger side. To put this bezel back in, you wanna make sure you tuck all the wiring back in the openings where it's supposed to land behind the connectors or else the bezel will not go on correctly. It just won't snap all the way on because the wiring will be in the way. So with all that tucked in, we just snap the bezel on. Next, we need to replace the four screws that hold the bezel in. Next, we'll need to install the new Sync2 MyFord Touch hub, which will involve running this cabling back to the compartment, and then we'll be reassembling the center console. So these three cables need to get run back, and what we'll do is we'll take the three cables, and underneath the edge of this console here, you have access through where I'm putting my hand, and you can reach right down the carpeted side. So we'll push out on the console a little bit and feed the cables up through. With the cables fed up through, we'll tuck away the connectors and cable. Next, we need to remove the existing USB port from the console. You see there's this plate right here and that's going to be replaced with the USB hub. So we'll use our dash tool and push from the back to release it. Once that's out, we gotta get the connector disconnected from it by prying on both, both top and bottom tabs that are holding the connector in. 
to set that plate out of the way. This cable can get tucked away in the center console as it is no longer used. We'll take our three new cables that we ran and run them up through the hole. Now we'll take our new My Ford Touch Sync 2 hub. Plug the black connector into one side with the clip facing the center of it. The gray goes in the other side. Now those are not interchangeable, so don't worry about mixing them up. It won't allow you to. And then the power connector, the clip faces the outside of the hub, and we clip that in as well. And we'll slide the hub in the opening. The hub will only go into the opening one way. We'll tuck the wiring in here. There is a couple harnesses in the center console here. And you can tuck the wiring off towards the passenger side. With the hub installed, we'll now reassemble the console. First we need to replace this, the cover plate that was over the screws. And then the tray. With the tray replaced, we'll put, put the two screws back in that we took out of it earlier. Set the tray liner back in as well. And then next we slide the clips back into place in the front of the console and snap this back down. Now, if you purchase the navigation version of this kit, you will need to install the map card and that just goes in the SD slot and you just push it all the way into the hub. Next we need to replace the four screws that are up here. There are two screws on each side that we took out earlier. Now with the screws replaced, we just have to put the side panels back on the console. Now we need to replace the piece of trim that went across the top of the dash here with the vents that overlaps the radio bezel. We'll just simply take the piece of trim set it back in place where it was lining up the vents and snap it back in. Once that's snapped back in, we'll take this small piece of trim at the end here and put that back in as well. We need to run the can opener flash programmers from 4D Tech that came with the conversion. These change settings on the vehicle to accept the new conversion and bezel. Both programmers have to be run, but it doesn't matter the order. One has, comes with a pigtail on it and the other one does not. Make sure you leave the pigtail on the one that it came on as it will not work in the other order. I will run the one with the pigtail first. It does not matter which one you run first. First, we need to turn on the ignition. The ignition needs to be on or the vehicle running. 
We'll plug the programmer into the diagnostic port underneath the driver's side dash near the kick panel, and we'll watch the LEDs on the programmer. They will blink blue as they're programming the system. The audio control module will reset while it is programming, and that is the AM radio that you hear in the background. It'll blink blue while it continues to program. And then it'll turn green, letting you know it is successfully programmed. We can unplug this programmer and we'll take the can opener flash without the pigtail and plug that into the diagnostic port next. Now we'll watch this one. And that'll blink blue as well while it's programming. Same as the other one, it'll blink blue and then it'll turn green once the program is successful. And then you may remove the programmer. Neither one has to stay in place. Now that we have completed the conversion, we'll turn on the vehicle and fire up the new system. As you see, we now have Sync 2 My Ford Touch up and running in this vehicle. Since we did the navigation version, we have navigation with the maps as well. Thank you for checking out our video for the 4 to 8 inch conversion in the 2015 Mustang with My Ford Touch Sync 2. This is Scott with 4D Tech.